Okay, get that to quit bobbing around. <clears throat> and let me pull this up so I can see comments. And I'm getting started because I don't like to keep people waiting because I know a lot of people will watch this during the replay. And let me just get my notes pulled up here in the group. Okay. Cool. Okay. So for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Dawn. Hi Paige. How are you doing? So I am going to basically be talking about, you know, we're leading in the summer, coming out of spring. A lot of people think, you know, spring the summer, that's the time to clean out your house, do some major spring cleaning, do some major, you know, changes and getting things straight in the house. Well, I had a really hard time actually preparing for this class because we could talk all night about the things I've learned, well, over the last couple years and now recently preparing for this class. So I have some notes with me. So how this is going to go, first I'm going to talk about the things that well, I was using too before I knew any different and then the things that I do now. So the first half part of the class is just going to be education and the second half is going to be getting to the tips and tricks. And I'm going to be looking away from the camera a lot um, for your benefit because I need to be able to watch my notes or else, like I said, we will be here all night long. So I got some Spearmint and Valor going in the diffuser right now. So I'm wide awake and my attention is focused. So it's my best intent to value your time tonight and well, not spend 29 hours talking about different cleaners and toxins and what they do to the environment. So here we go. So basically <clears throat> it was a big surprise to me a couple years ago as far as my lack of education. Um, when it came to cleaning products. I didn't, you know, take a second look. I took the things on the shelf for face value and that's what we typically do. We trust what is on the shelf that, you know, that's safe for our family. I didn't think anything of it. So household cleaners are not usually thought of as pollutants. They're used inside the confines of our home, um, specifically to make our indoor environment safe and clean for human habitation and our animals, right? So however, some of these cleaners that we use to sanitize, degrease, whiten, wash clothes, and all that kind of stuff, dishes, beddings, they're harming our water and our air, and us, and our kids, and even wild animals. Kind of crazy. So the chemicals in the cleaners, a lot of them are actually common pollutants that contribute to smog, uh, reduce the quality of our drinking water, and like I said, they're just toxic to all animals, domestic and wild, which is super, super sad. So I never knew this. Did you? Um, and y'all know, if anybody knows me, you guys know I love, love, love my dogs and all animals. And I wouldn't knowingly harm my pets or animals or anyone else's children. And I know you wouldn't either, right? So it was very disheartening when I found out a lot of the different things in our cleaning products and chemicals. And beware, buyer beware. There's something called greenwashing out there. So a lot of these products that look safe and green, flip them over and you're going to find a lot of the same uh, words that I'm going to be talking about that are VOCs and other toxic chemicals. And I don't like throwing companies under the bus, but if you go on Lysol and uh, Clorox's website, they actually tell you to remove children and pets from the area. Uh, for 30 minutes after cleaning and also to rinse the areas. And I know that when we spray around that stuff during, you know, illness season, I know nobody's going around rinsing that stuff off 10 minutes after. It's, we're never meant to come in contact with it. And the company knows it, they put it on their website, but that's not how the product's being used. And then another one, it's a popular one, um, Miss something, anyway, I used to use it still full of the same synthetic fragrances and stuff that we're going to talk about. So just buyer beware for greenwashing. That's when they make a product look natural, but it's not. It still has the same harmful stuff in it. So back to my notes. So <clears throat> when I started integrating essential oils into my life, because I had some severe, severe seasonal respiratory immune support issues, well, I began to learn more about what chemicals are actually um, around us and what they're doing to us. So first of all, 
sadly, most of what was under my sink was super highly toxic and were common allergens, skin irritants, respiratory disruptors, and endocrine disruptors. Um, and as far as if you're not sure what endocrine disruptors are, basically your endocrine system, it's your hormone control center. So we don't want that messed up. We're going to talk a little more about that here in a few minutes. But basically tipping that balance can lead to early puberty and lots of overgrowth of unhealthy cells. Um, can you think of a common rampant, well, common illness that's an overgrowth of unhealthy cells? It's 95% acquired and only 5 to 10% genetic. And there's all different kinds of it and it starts with a big old C so yeah that is what overgrowth of unhealthy cells leads to so we don't want endocrine disruptors okay so back to my notes here so why and how is this stuff even available I was wondering the same thing well in 1976, like I said, did a lot of research here, when the European Union was starting to remove chemicals that pose toxicities to humans and the environment, the Toxic Substance Control Act, the TSCA in America, they actually took a different approach, basically saying these chemicals are innocent until proven guilty. So they grandfathered in existing toxic chemicals without further study and regulation. So now, the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, has been able to go in and require a lot of these companies to provide data of what these chemicals and toxins are doing, but it's we don't have a lot of history on this research yet. And the EPA has a hard time getting these companies to actually remove the toxins because they're grandfathered in. So basically, though, back in the day, well, back in 1976, the cost of removing these toxins would have taken us into an economic depression. I mean, we just had the war, and... People just were not, this is, economy would not have stayed stabilized if we had major changes like that. And so it was planned to be revisited when the, com when the country was more stable financially. Well, that never happened. So for the past, well, going on half a century now, we've been using these grandfathered in toxins and now we're actually seeing the results of what having these toxins in our you know, cleaning products and body care products is actually doing to us. Um, so let's talk about some of the chemical culprits. So EPA names phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia. Those are some of the main chemicals, um, volatile organic compounds. These are the, according to them, the worst environmental hazards in our household cleaners. Um, so according to the Canadian Labor Environment Alliance Society, dishwasher detergents contain 30 to 40% phosphorus, I've since um, switched to the Thieves dishwasher detergent. It's super awesome. And there's some other natural ones too we'll talk about. Um, I like the Thieves dishwasher detergent because I only end up using half of what they advise to use and my dishes still come out awesome. Um, and another little tip is use your Thieves cleaner in where your jet dry used to go in the rinse cycle. Everything is sparkling clean. You don't have to worry about toxins. Um, Ammonia is everywhere, so it's like your window cleaners and all your other, like there's tons of different cleaners with ammonia in it. And so VOCs, basically they're just in a wide range of cleaning products. Um, nitrogen is found in glass and service cleaning products as well, as well as floor cleaners. And on a side note, um, in some other classes, we often talk about the benefits of mopping our floor with Thieves Cleaner because the pores of our feet, where we apply essential oils a lot of times, are some of the most absorbent in our body. So if it's really good for you to be walking around on Thieves Cleaner because you're absorbing in the immune support and everything that supports your body from the thieves, you're also absorbing in this bad nitrogen in floor cleaners also through your feet. And so are your babies and so are your pets. Um, yeah, I don't like to think about pulling all that yuck in through toxic floor cleaners. So anyway, yeah, kind of gross, huh? So we often talk about the benefits of it. Um, like I said, the thieves, that's good to be soaking into our body. We don't want to be soaking up the bad stuff. Okay, so more than just our house. <clears throat> so these are entering our waterways. So like the nitri uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, ammonia, they're dangerous water contaminants. So they go down the drains, they're flushed down our toilets. Um, every time, you know, you're cleaning the mirror, cleaning the sink, cleaning the bathtub, all that stuff goes down the drain. We don't give it a second thought. And a lot of the pollutants are removed by water waste treatment facilities uh, before they're returned to river streams and that kind of stuff. However, these cleaning chemicals, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and ammonia, they're not removed um, 
by water treatment plants. They cannot get all of them out. So these end up back in the environment, back in our groundwater, and they basically change the environmental structure of our planet. So as these chemicals enter back in, um, the levels aren't controlled because they, they're not being, you know, we don't know what's not being taken out at the water treatment plant, let alone what doesn't go through a water treatment plant. So this can actually lead to overgrowth of some bacteria and dense vegetation that clogs waterways, crowding out animal life and other marine and plant life. So at the end, basically these plants, their chemical accelerated lifestyle, life cycle die in a large mass. Um, they start decaying, depleting the oxygen in the water. Algae can then start to grow. Um, and then the animals, freshwater, shellfish, others, oysters, all them, they start dying off and causing more decay. So soon the water is no longer drinkable or suitable for drinking or cooking or bathing. And even, you know, wild animals shouldn't be drinking the water because it has all kind of crazy bacteria in it. From us, you know, flushing toilets after we've used phosphorus and nitrogen and ammonia. So it's just something to think about our, what you do in your home. Um, some people are like, oh, you know, I don't mind using these cleaners. It's, you know, I'm not using them for that long. Well, you're breathing them in, you're touching them, and everything you breathe in and touch, first of all, goes into your body system. But either way, if you're like, okay, cool, I don't care, I'm okay with it, like if you're okay with dues and Lysol wipes and stuff still, when all that goes back out into the environment and the landfills and starts soaking into the ground, this is the kind of stuff that's changing, and we're gonna talk more about other environmental factors, but it just, you know, it throws me for a loop that, you know, our waterways are all being contaminated by completely preventable activities. If we were not using these certain um, cleaners, then we wouldn't be having these outcomes. It's a really easy fix. Well, easy fix if, you know, financials weren't involved in, well, if people just were a little more educated. And I was there too. I was totally there too. I took face value. Your husband, you just talked about that. Yeah, it's so, it's starting to become more public. I'm seeing more and more studies about it. And it's, I think, because people are really realizing, I'm going to talk here in a little bit, fertility rate in animals are going down. Wild animals, they're noticing, you know, less deer being born. Scientists are starting to study why wild animals are having issues and cellular changes. I'm going to go into that a little more here in a minute. Um, okay, so air contamination. VOCs can cause health hazards by concentrating inside our household air. So, why should we clean with things that are toxic to us in our home? It's not exactly cleaning now, in my opinion. It used to be. I used to be the person who had to hurry up and turn on the fans, clean the bathroom real quick, and open the window and shut the door and not go back in there for two hours because you basically couldn't breathe or it burned your lungs to breathe. Now, I can I keep these cleaner in my shower. I can clean in the shower and it's completely safe. Pro tip, I spray this on my razor too. It kills the bacteria on the razor. And well, you don't want bacteria on your razor. We'll just leave that there. So anyway, I can get off track easy. <laughs> so back to air issues in our house. So we open the windows in our house to let out all those VOCs the, that are concentrated in our house from the phosphorus, the ammonia, and the nitrogen, and other cleaning issue, other cleaning chemicals. So all that starts going out in the air, and especially in like big cities, this goes um, and contributes to smog and well, just other air pollutants. And actually, the state of California, they have a board against this, the California's Air Resolution Board. So it's not acceptable for you to be basically allowing these chemicals to go into the air. So at least, um, you know, sometimes I agree and disagree with different governmental things, but we're not going into all that. But I like the idea that, you know, it, the people aren't just turning their heads anymore on what these toxic cleaners are doing to the air. So what about everything else that you're using? What about like your hand soaps? Um, other cleaners that have fake fragrances in it and contain things like parabens, sodium lauryl sulfates, or you'll see SLSs or SLESs and triclosan. So those are just some of the toxins um, that the European Union have banned. And yeah, so I found multiple different numbers and multiple different studies, but one of the studies, um, they said right now there is 1,328 that are banned in the European Union toxins and the U.S. has only banned 11 of those. And again, like I said, I really, I, I don't think they're out trying to like get us. If they are, then shame on me for not realizing it. But 
it all goes back to, you know, in the 70s when all this stuff just got grandfathered in. And now it's so hard, you know, half century later to make these changes. So it's up to us to be educated and it's up to us to read labels. And that's honestly one of the reasons why I absolutely love Young Living because I don't have to read the label. They're not going to make me a product that is, well, has toxins in it, has parabens in it or SLSs or anything like that. I don't have to read labels with them. So I'm all about the easy button and that's my easy button. But anyway, we're going to keep going here. So paraben or any other word ending in arabin or urban or anything like that, if you see in the ingredients list, um, basically these mimic estrogens and they wreck our hormones and they can disrupt developmenting hormones in our children too. So if you've not noticed a spike in the need for fertility clinics lately in the last 30 years, our parents didn't have these issues. So, and by the way, they're being, uh, parabens are being found in pretty much every breast cancer study when they start dissecting the tumors down. Uh, when they're biopsied, they're finding parabens in it. So the government, again, didn't intentionally try to harm us with these things called parabens. Actually, a paraben is a preservative. And it was thought that our body could flush it out. But now, you know, after about half a century, we've realized, hmm, we're not flushing this thing out. Our cells don't know what to do with them and they just kind of hold on to them. So like when Tide, Dove, and Dial, they make all their products, these can be stored for an incredible amount of time so they don't get moldy because there's not just one plant out there that just makes Tide all day long. Like they'll make their Tide and store it. And then that plant makes something else and it's stored. Um, you know, they have different, like the big major companies, all the different products they make, they're not just 24 seven making one product at each plant. Those get used for different things. And then the product gets stored and bottled later. Well, it can't get moldy. So they use parabens to keep it from getting moldy. We're finding now it's not necessary, but it's a cheap, easy way to keep it from getting moldy. Like I said, we don't flush it out. Our cells don't have a clue what to do with it because it's a synthetic hormone. It was never meant to come into our bodies to begin with and it changes estrogen levels. So men are now having way too much estrogen in their body and women also are having too much estrogen so, and it's synthetic so our body doesn't know how to regulate it and it encourages the growth of unhealthy tissue. Um, so this is what's going you know, down our drains too. So if you're using your fragrance laden soap and a lot of times even if it doesn't say the word paraben on it, if it still has the word fragrance on it, Parabens can be in the fragrance. The company doesn't have to tell you what is in the word fragrance on the ingredient. So you want to find a company that's transparent and does not use the word fragrance. If they don't tell you what's in their fragrance, they say it's proprietary, then I would keep on moving on. I wouldn't bother with it and waste your time because you might be thinking again that you're getting something good and healthy, but it's just being greenwashed and they're not telling you what's in it. So, um, like I said, this stuff's going down our drains and our groundwaters. And now I was telling you a little bit, there's studies where scientists are starting to look at animals because there's an increase in cancers in wild animals and cell mutation, as well as they're noticing a decrease in certain populations of animals. And they're not just relating it to deforestation and things like that. These are dense areas where, you know, the water runoff comes from big cities and they're testing positive for all these chemicals that these animals should never have been exposed to anyway. Um, like I'm gonna talk about tri uh, triclosan in a little bit. We shouldn't have triclosan showing up in traces of, you know, wild animal urine and wild animal meat. That's weird, just weird, not, no. I, I don't know, like I said, we could talk for years about this. So now moving on, so sodium lauryl sulfates, uh, they basically, they are known to cause developmental and reproductive toxicities as well as other cancers and allergies. You're gonna find these as emulsifiers. They're not necessary. I use a whole line of safe and healthy body washes and soaps and lotions that and toothpastes, this can come in your toothpaste too, that don't have emulsifiers in it as well as laundry detergents. So, um, and some companies will say, oh, it's just going on you or you're just cleaning with it or washing your clothes with it. It's not like you're using it internally. Again, if you're putting something on your body every single day, like you brush your teeth every, I hope you brush your teeth every day. So if you're brushing your teeth every day, usually twice a day, you're putting sodium lauryl sulfates in your mouth. You can't tell me it's not gonna soak into your super absorbent cells on your gums into your body. So if you're using something twice a day, every day for your entire life that you know, has not been studied for that. And they say, oh, it's okay in small doses. What's a small dose? I mean, what about bioaccumulation? Again, your cells don't know how to get rid of this fake stuff. 
So when you use it every single day, twice a day, what, where, where's it going and what's it doing to you? Again, I keep going back to the studies on why, well, the big C is only 10% genetic, 5 to 10% hereditary and genetic, and the other 90 to 95% is acquired through our foods, interactions, um, exposure. So things we use every day. So I don't know. I feel like a lot of that can be eliminated. So um, we can go on and on. Petroleum, talc. I'm not going to talk about all the different toxins um, in our household products. Uh, like I said, I'm going to cover one more, the triclosan, and then I'm going to go on to the tips and tricks. And is this, let me pull up my iPad and see if it shows me the timer on it. Um, hmm. Yeah, my phone doesn't have the timer. That's okay. I don't think I've been going too, too long here. I think only about like 20 minutes. I don't want to keep you all all night. Okay, so triclosan, it's widely used personal hygiene and disinfecting purposes. So a lot of like your conventional hand sanitizers are full of triclosan. I use the Thieves hand purifier, has no triclosan, and you can get it in the big pump too. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> there's a hair on my face, drive me nuts. So World Health Organization says that we might be entering a post-antibiotic era in the 21st century just due to the widespread of antibiotic resistance. Um, antibiotic resistance is defined as bacteria's ability to survive a concentration of antibiotics that typically, in inter that typically inhibit growth. Okay, anyway, lots of big words. Um, basically, there's being so many triclos triclosans used in addition to antibiotics that it's being found um, in our wastewater, our soil, our drinking water, um, landfills, sediments, and like I said, now wild animals. So each year, the United States alone, there's a hair on my face, sorry y'all, <laughs> over 2 million people are infected by antibiotic resistant bacteria. And again, I have not needed antibiotics in a really long time, but dang it, if I need them, I want them to work, okay? So this leads, so these 2 million people that are being affected by antibiotic resistance um, about 25,000 of them die, and that's $50 billion spent in trying to manage their antibiotic resistant issues. And this is all from the CDC, um, and that's from a study in 2013. And so the associated cost to increase bacteria, um, basically to acquire the mechanisms to fight this, is just, it's through the roof right now. Um, the CDC just can't get a rein in on it because the bacteria is mutating so fast. Um, each year, Hold on, down my notes. Okay, so it's being widely found in human urine. They did a study in 2014, and this is sad. 181 pregnant women in the urban multi-ethnic population area of Brooklyn, New York, uh, triclosan was found in 100% of the samples. And when they did a geographic border survey um, in 2008, and again, I don't know what kind of population that was, but 76% of the people in that survey were found to have triclosan in them. And now, like I said, it's popping up in the urine and meat of wild animals, which is creepy, creepy, creepy. So um, basically the triclosan, it is so strong, it's killing off the bacteria. So it's just, it would be like flushing a ton of antibiotics too. And it's not necessary. It's not necessary to have complete, you know, antibacterial soap all the time. That's why I use the Thieves soap. It has the natural clove in it. It gets rid of the funk. We're gonna talk about different things that different essential oils do here in a little bit. But overusing antibiotic soap and overusing hand sanitizers, those are leading to antibiotic resistance. So things like strep, E. coli, staph infections, antibiotics are having a hard time killing this. And so like I said, I haven't had needed one in a long time, but if, it, if I get E. coli or strep or staph, I want my antibiotic to work, okay? Um, basically, so when people are using hand sanitizer over and over and over and over again, the kind with triclosan in it, it actually damages your cells and causes basically the membrane to break down and your cells are physically beginning to leak. Gross, huh? And then, so then they're absorbing in the triclosan and they're absorbing in everything else you come in contact with. That's one of the reasons it dries your hands out because it breaks down the membranes on it. So the Thieves Hand Purifier, this stuff's awesome. Um, it has peppermint in it, it smells amazing. It still has the Thieves, so it kills all the funk. My hands are actually clean and I don't need to use this, but I love it so much. It actually nourishes your hands. Um, this comes in the starter kit now. Uh, if you haven't used this, you need to try it. It's amazing. And like I said, you can get the big bottles too for on your desk. 
and I refill my little bottle, so I always have little ones with me. So, wrapping this up here. Like I said, we could be here for the next week talking about exposure to household things and cleaners and everything that's going on in our country. But, so, the 10 basic takeaways um, as far as what the main things of exposure to these household toxins are causing, uh, reproductive adversities, and uh, also decline in the age of onset of puberty, decline in fertility, increased rates of poor birth outcomes, and um, such as babies born be prematurely and with uh, cellular abnormalities, uh, being small for their birth age, uh, increased rates of childhood diseases such as autism and childhood leukemia, increases of cancers, increases of obesity, increases of asthma and respiratory distresses, and increases of attention disorder. And people don't often think of a household cleaner causing an attention, a, attention disorder, but those fake fragrances and those VOCs hanging in your environment, if you've ever heard of a sick house, once you get all that funk out of your house, oh my gosh, it's amazing how my, your mind is clear. And it's, I don't know, it's night and day. I can notice a difference now to what our house was like five years ago. And also um, allergens with skin and other allergens. So respiratory allergens, sinus allergies, skin allergies. Those are things that are common with uh, basically having toxic household cleaners and chemicals. So now let me pull open my other notes pages here. I've been really good on trying not to print out stuff. So now we're going to talk about things that you use instead. So first off, I'm just going to go through, and again, I, you guys, if you know me, I only use Young Living because I trust their purity, their seed to seal standard. Uh, and it's also unfortunate that young uh, uh, essential oils in general are not regulated in our country. So you can find bottles that say 100% therapeutic grade pure at Wally World. And I can, I can bet you, I'll bet you a lot of money. Those are not 100% pure therapeutic grade. They actually, um, per government standards, only have to have 5% essential oil in that bottle. And it doesn't even have to be true essential oil. So is, they could come up with a synthetic lavender. And as long as like the, the DNA compound looks like a plant lavender, they can call it an essential oil. And it might not even have any real lavender in it at all. It might be completely synthetic and they're able to label it 100% therapeutic grade as long as 5% of that DNA matches the true plant molecule. Um, and so then it's cut down with solvents and extenders and things to make, uh, well, it lasts longer. So for one, if it has a warning label, it's not a real oil. If it has an expiration date, if it's not, a, it's definitely not a real oil. And if it's something you should be able to eat, like lemon or peppermint, and it says not for internal use, then it's really not a real oil. Um, because, well, if it's made from a food, it should be able to be used, you know, internally. That's why Young Living has their Vitality line for internal use. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that being said, oh, here's a fun fact. I think it was in like 2014, there was 400 times more lavender oil made than lavender plants grown in the whole world. So how'd they do that? chemical extenders and fake oils. So like I said, just be mindful. Even if your bottle says 100% therapeutic grade, do your research on the company. Um, I like Young Living because it's completely transparent. You can visit the farms, you can visit the partner farms. They're not going to alter or change a product just to make a buck. You know, some plants only grow in certain seasons. If it's out of season, you might not get that oil. So you need to plan ahead or, you know, use a different oil. There's tons of different ones and they all have multiple properties too. So you don't, like if you don't have lemon, you might be able to use orange. If you don't have a uh, peppermint, you can probably use spearmint. So see where I'm going here? There's always a way. So again, <clears throat> what I'm gonna talk about here, these, this data I'm looking up is not Young Living specific. These are just basic essential oils and good properties of them. But again, make sure it's a good quality oil that you can trust. So lemon oil is antiviral and antibacterial. So that would be an awesome oil to add to your cleaners. Thieves already contains lemon, so this is Thieves Cleaner. Um, tea tree, also, uh, it fights germs, bacteria, viruses. Rosemary, in your thieves, antibacterial, antiseptic. Um, orange is great against grease. Uh, pretty much any citrus is great against grease. They have great delimining properties to them. Citrus Fresh is one of my favorite blends for cleaning. It has orange in it and lemon. 
I love grapefruit too for cleaning. I just love the way the clean aroma too. But yeah, any citrus, it'll get the labels off of stuff. It gets adhesive off of things. I like, I use it as a natural goo gone. <clears throat> Lavender, another one that's seasonal trio. It's naturally antibacterial. Uh, eucalyptus is a natural germicide. And again, these are just general information about any basic essential oil here. Uh, peppermint is said to be antibacterial. Cinnamon is said to be antibacterial and antiseptic. Um, pine is great for basically helping clean for respiratory issues. So it kind of cleans the air, so it's a good one to diffuse. And thyme is one of the most powerful agents against germs. And like I said, they this just kind of goes for any essential oil here. And I'm gonna bounce around because I have different pages pulled up for notes. Um, Basically, lemon, some ideas for lemon. You can use it to deodorize your fridge, clean the floor. Um, you can mix it with some olive oil for a natural wood or leather polish. Uh, the tea tree, you can do um, homemade wipes. And I'll make homemade wipes with the Thieves Cleaner and you can add other essential oils to it. Um, I like the Viva paper towels and I cut them. This is a smaller roll. I'll use part of them in my kitchen. And when they get small enough to fit in these different containers, and I've even gotten some from the dollar store. I like these, I got those ones on Amazon, I think. Um, I'll cut them down, and this is really small. I usually do something bigger if it's a bigger container. But um, yeah, yeah, these are stretchy like a cloth. Now typically when I clean, I actually use old t-shirts, so I'm not contributing to you know, more waste. And then I can just wash the old t-shirts. But if I do want wipes, or if we're on the go, and you know we're gonna be in the car, or, you know, if we're going to like a B&B or a cabin or something, I'll usually take a Thieves spray bottle, but I'll make wipes too because they just come in handy if you're not at home. You can wipe it up, throw it away, the paper towel is gonna break down, it's not gonna, you know, stay in the environment forever. And so the way I make the wipes is I will mix, um, like I said, normally my container's twice this tall. This is just the last one I have left. I've given them all out. I'll mix um, about a cap full of Thieves cleaner in with a three quarters cup of water and just pour it right in the center and let it sit in there for a second. Sometimes I'll add lemon oil or citrus fresh or pine or whatever. And then the little um, cardboard thing just slides out after you add the cleaner in and let it sit. And if it's not wet enough, just add a little more. And oh, use filtered or distilled water because you don't want to be adding in water to your cleaner that has kind of, you know, funk in it. Uh, rosemary they say here you can add it for a laundry booster and so some of the things i do with laundry i'm bouncing around a little bit here i first as i'm throwing it excuse me the thieves laundry detergent if you're already on our team in the co-op there's an awesome hack about how to make this bottle go three times as long so like you said i have 33 listed on here i used to divide it in half now i get it in thirds so instead of just getting 64 loads because it's six times concentrated it is, and it works super awesome. I use this on my workout clothes, and I'll be honest, uh, my workout clothes are probably kind of old. I need new ones, and they stink, um, and it gets all that funky smell out, and we have the dilution recipe for that, um, especially for high efficiency washers. You can add oils to this to up it. Um, some people like adding orange to it or purification. Um, you can add a little thieves cleaner for a boost. So for stain remover, I'll just use straight thieves cleaner or you can use your lemon oil for a stain removal. Um, I put the lemon oil on there, like if it's, especially if it's a grease stain, because the lemon oil will break down the grease stain, and then you can come along with a good dish soap. Again, I use the Thieves. This one I've not diluted down yet, and you can see how thick it is. I get three bottles out of this one bottle. On a side note, in case you've not heard, Young Living doesn't charge you to ship water. All their stuff is so super concentrated, and it doesn't have any of the toxic yuck. But lemon oil will bust down the grease, and then you can lift it away with the soap and then wash it and you're good to go. Uh, another little laundry tip, as we bounce around here between oils and tips, I learned about this actually in a continuing education course on essential oils, and the class was not specific on brand, um, and I thought this was cool. It is a burn washing ball, and it contains uh, charcoal and ceramic beads and it has 1,500 washes in it. The only thing is, and it's kind of plasticky, it bends some, um, what you do, you soak it for about an hour before you're gonna do laundry, 
And I'll use this on the towels and sheets and that kind of stuff. And I still, I'll use my thieves on the workout clothes. I go kind of back and forth. I use this sometimes, I use that sometimes. I really don't have a great rhyme or reason. But you're supposed to be able to get like 1,500 washes out of this. And it doesn't release any of the toxins into the environment. Um, and it's just nice, so in case I'm ever running low on laundry detergent, I have a backup. I always have something because it's just, it works fine. Um, and for those, and I should have brought a dryer ball one. For those of you who like an aroma for your laundry, um, even diluted, the Thieves still has that crisp, that crisp, clean Thieves smell. But if you want more of that, like, if you need more just power, like killing the funk um, or antimicrobial power, uh, yeah but natural. You can put lavender, purification, uh, thieves, any of these oils on the dryer balls. And if you haven't seen the wool dryer balls, those take place of your dryer sheet. I even include dryer sheets. Dang, those are full of toxins. Those are one of the, those are end up staying on your clothes for weeks because they're covered in weird waxes. So the dryer balls are the way to go. I've had the same dryer balls now for like three years. And uh, another tip, as they start to kind of get soft, because they're, they're wool, they're natural organic wool, um, they don't get rid of the static as good. So a tip that I learned from another Young Living Crossline member, she put big safety pins on it, or you can put a ball of foil in there. I like the safety pin idea because they're just on the balls then. Like I just pin two or three to um, one of the wool dryer balls, and that's just what goes in the dryer. And they help your clothes dry faster because the wool helps kind of absorb some of the moisture but you can just drip these oils on the dryer ball and throw it in. So I like using lavender on clothes that I know are gonna be like sleepy clothes or your children's bed linen. That would be an awesome place to use lavender or peace and calming or stress away. Um, thieves, I use thieves and citrus fresh a lot because my workout clothes, like I said, I they're, they're not, they look fine, but I sweat a lot. CrossFit's mean, but wonderful in a good way. <laughs> um, that's a whole nother class. So, just going through some of the other different oils. So I mentioned the lavender, you can use that on the dryer balls. Um, you can use it in home room sprays too. Like instead of using uh, Febreze or other air fresheners that aren't really freshening, but they're leaving just VOCs in your house, I'll do a little bit, one of my favorites is lavender, peppermint, and purification. And then a little bit of just natural witch hazel, probably like a tablespoon, and then the rest distilled water. And then I can just spray this all over my house. Um, by the way, spiders hate peppermint, so great tip for cleaning um, and keeping the pests away. Uh, so you can add tea tree, you could do rosemary. There's so many different things, eucalyptus. You just make your own room spray with lavender and rosemary smell amazing together, by the way. And as I mentioned before, they have lots of just like great, great properties. Um, so some other ideas, They and again, this is just common Google knowledge that I'm just putting together here. So you can add lavender to your shampoo and conditioner to help nourish your scalp, but also help keep pests away. Same with tea tree and peppermint. They help keep unwanted friends away on your head. Uh, eucalyptus is really good for helping deep clean your mattress. So you could spray your mattress. Um, great for spraying stuffed animals too, because you know, that little stuffed animal that gets clutched around, drooled on, nose wiped on, drug on the floor of the car, dropped in the parking lot, dropped in the grocery store, that stuffed animal or blankie is probably disgusting. So spritzing it down with some eucalyptus, you can get a lot of that funk off there and you're not gonna harm, it's not gonna harm your child when they cuddle up next to it then. Um, peppermint, well, like I said, it doesn't, spiders hate peppermint. Oh, ants also don't like peppermint too. And so you can mix some of that in a spray bottle and just spray it around for freshening, but also keeping the pests away. Let's see here, cinnamon. And again, this is just general. I'm just talking about essential oils in general. Um, studies have found that it's a really good to inhibit mold growth. And that's probably why Thieves is so awesome because it contains cinnamon. And actually I have a book all about mold and it talks a ton about clove and cinnamon um yeah i'm the weird person who when i started learning a little bit i was like oh my gosh i realized all i didn't know and all the craziness i was using like i said couldn't go on forever uh pine like i said is another one that's like really good for respiratory because it kills the spores so this is a good one we had mentioned before where uh e coli wasn't being able to be killed because of the overuse of triclosan. There's studies that are showing pines and other conifers are really good for fighting this area. And it also does help with mold and mildew and that kind of stuff. Uh, and thyme, 
Thyme is a really good one they're saying for like homemade dish soaps or something. So if you, when you dilute down your thieves dish soap, you can add some thyme oil to it. Or if you make your own, um, like if you use like a Dr. Bonner soap or something like that and make your own, you can add thyme to it. Uh, and they recommend that's what you should clean your cutting boards with, especially ones that come in contact with raw meat, because that thyme oil is super, 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 super powerful. And I need to save that website. Okay, talked about laundry and pine, oh, some more on pine. Yeah, it's really good for stress too. So, and when people have chronic respiratory issues, so um, she's not watching now, but my, my friend Jennifer, she was talking about this today, having issues with like pneumonia and bronchitis. This is another one that they're saying. And again, I'm not being brand specific when I'm talking about this. I've just looked up general studies and information but it's up to you to make sure you choose an excellent brand that you know you you know is safe for you and your family. And so you can do different cleaners. I have another bottle like this. Yeah, if you get the Thieves Home Cleaning Kit, which actually just came back in stock, it comes with a brown bottle just like this. And so that one, I actually have pine written across it. And so I do my Thieves Cleaner, but I add the pine oil to that that came in the kit. And it's just you know nice to change it up and they have different properties to them. Um, but you can do pine cleaner for your whole home and they talk about using the castle soap. You can use uh, cypress oil, lemon oil, pine, other fur oils, whatever kind of fur oils you want. And you can put all that in a bucket or you can put it in a spray bottle. Um, you would add just probably like a tablespoon of the castle soap in the bucket they talked about adding um, two tablespoons. If you're doing a spray bottle, probably like this, you'd even do a half a tablespoon. But Again, be mindful. I like the Dr. Bonner's Castle Soap, but I know this is backwards to you guys, but I get the um, the baby one because it's fragrance free. Unfortunately, um, even the Dr. Bonner Soap, even though it's so organic and so versatile, if you get like the eucalyptus or the peppermint and stuff, you don't know the quality of what where that's coming from as far as the fragrance. So even after doing some research, I decided that um, fragrance free is the way to go the unscented it's completely clean and I can put my own essential oils in it that I know are pure and you know that I know what properties they have to them so going down the line here okay so a jewelry cleaner and I've made this before with some friends it's a little bit of these cleaner so you basically do an empty jar five drops of lemon so that same lemon that you can put in your water or a capsule or use as a degreaser and goo gone in an adhesive remover multiple purposes and if you're out of lemon i'm sure you can use citrus fresh or orange but you do a few drops of lemon they said five a, a teaspoon of baking soda and then a little bit of thieves household cleaner in a jar and you can just swirl your jewelry around and then if you want you can take a toothbrush and gently clean it it will make it super shiny um and some of these recipes going off track here can be found in these books chemical free home these are melissa pepping's books so I was gonna say, I know I've seen that recipe before and it's in these books. This could be a whole nother class, y'all. Um, and she's updated these, they have a different cover now, but still the same great information. So some other tips and tricks here. Um, a shower scrub. So vinegar, there's been controversy on vinegar. I love vinegar for a lot of things. So especially like killing weeds, I'll mix white vinegar with a little bit of the thieves dish soap and then salt, cause it'll kill grass and weeds outside without putting all the other, again, whole other class, putting all that other pesticides into the ground that are causing, you know, frogs to basically change gender in the middle of their life. That's awesome. Anyway, um, so for a shower scrub, you can use vinegar, lemon oil, and baking soda. And they recommend too, a little bit of a natural, um, a natural soap. So you could use the Dr. Bonner's or you can use your Thieves dish soap. And I would even add a little bit of the Thieves cleaner to that. Uh, basically you just mix it into a paste and you can use it to scrub your grout. You can put it on a wet cloth or sponge. And again, it's all safe stuff. So you can actually just clean the shower while you're in the shower and kind of get that soap scum off and get that buildup off. So shower cleaner down the line here, a wood floor cleaner. So, um, they use citrus fresh in this. Again, you can use your lemon, your orange, any one of those. I do love citrus fresh. Comes in the starter kit. Um, on here, they said two capfuls of these cleaners. So that's pretty, that's, you know, super, super, super powerful. Um, but that's diluted down in a gallon of warm water. 
and then they added a cup of olive oil and then just five drops of citrus fresh and so that's your diy wood floor cleaner for if you have the real real wood floors now Again, you can't go wrong with this stuff. So you could dilute that, not dilute that down. You could pare that down smaller. Um, right now, I just use the Thieves Cleaner alone in my spray mop. Uh, but I like the idea of adding a little bit of the olive oil to it and see, because we have laminate wood floors and I want to see if it nourishes it a little bit. Because right now they're shiny and clean and I love, I mean, they look great with the Thieves, but I'll have to try this because I've added I've done a cleaner similar to this for our wood cabinets and they come out real nice and shiny um, I didn't use as much thieves and um, what did I I think I added the citrus fresh and not as much because I was because it's so powerful I was worried about it taking off the finish and they're fine it didn't take off the finish but that was my own fearful self because I know how powerful the citrus oils are um, but typically I'll be honest I'm a simple girl. I like the easy button, okay? This is just the basic Thieves solution. Um, again, from a Thieves cleaner that you get, you know, 30 of those bottles out of this. And that's my grout cleaner, that's my glass cleaner, window cleaner, everything cleaner. Um, shower, that's the standard dilution. If I need it stronger, um, I have like a small bottle. Again, isn't this cute? It was free from Young Living a couple years ago. So I put a thicker dilution in here and add lemon to this. And normally it says degreaser on it, but it's gotten thieves on it. And so it's come off of it. So I'll have a smaller bottle for a degreaser. But honestly, like I said, I'm an easy button girl and you can do different things. And I need to start adding some other oils too. Doing this class was good for me. Um, made me get out of my little comfort zone of my easy button. But if you need an easy button, Standard Thieves is still gonna, it's gonna do the job for you because it's made with amazing oils. Um, so some different, basically now I have pulled up different uh, uses for the Thieves cleaner. You can use it as a laundry booster. Um, you can add it uh, for a carpet cleaner. I've used it in the upholstery cleaner and the carpets come out awesome. I could not believe the funk that was coming out of the carpets um, the first time I used the Thieves cleaner. It was insane. And I normally clean, the, our bedrooms still have carpet, so I normally clean them like every three months. And Roomba's in there all the time vacuuming, so it's not like the floors aren't being cleaned. Um, adding it to your dishwasher uh, in the rinse cycle. And we mentioned that before, a floor cleaner. Pots and pans, so you can, um, if you need to soak them, you can put a more concentrated uh, amount of Thieves cleaner in there. Also some lemon oil in there will help get some of that funk off. And then a little bit of baking soda to just, you know, get the grit off of your pans. What else haven't we talked about yet? Oh, you can make your own hand cleaner, which I thought is super awesome. Um, Cause they have the Thieves spray, which I don't have any sitting around. I normally do, which I love, but you can make your own either with Thieves oil, uh, rosemary oil, lemon oil, any of the oils we talked about, um, or even a little bit of the Thieves cleaner in some distilled water. And then just, you know, technically, you could just spray your hands with this and be good to go. So I actually keep Thieves Cleaner with some purification added in my car. Um, I used to do home health from time to time. I haven't done it very much lately, but I would totally spray it on my whole self and my shoes because there were some houses that had some creatures in them. Um, and I didn't want to bring those creatures' eggs into my car. So I would spray it on the bottom of my uh, shoes with the Thieves and the purification and hopefully kill those little critters because I didn't want to bring them into my car and then into my house and then into my life. I don't need those kind of friends. They have too many legs. I don't, four legs is enough for friends. That's it, okay? Um, so in a fruit and veggie spray, Young Living has fruit and veggie spray and a fruit and veggie cleaner. But before I got those for free a couple months ago, again, easy button, same thieves bottle. I have multiple ones all over the house. And the floor cleaner I already talked about. Okay. We talked about stain removal. Okay. Oh, a toy cleaner. That was the next thing I had on here. So um, I've seen hacks and stuff where you put toys in dishwashers and stuff like Legos in a laundry bin and stuff like that. The cool thing about the Thieves cleaner, you can make the wipes or you can spray down your kids' toys and wipe them down really good. And you don't have to worry like you do with Lysol and bleach if your little one goes and sticks it in their mouth 10 minutes later. Um, they might taste a little bit of the cinnamon on it and might make a face at you. But if anything, it's just boosting their immune system and it's not harming them in any way, shape or form. So that's one another thing. Um, I'm gonna be doing a baby's class in two weeks. I've been getting info from friends and doing lots of research too. And that's another thing that my mama friends are loving because they can just spray down the high chair 
doesn't matter if the baby's in the high chair. You're not going to hurt the baby. Um, don't get it in their eyes because essential oils aren't meant to go in eyes. If that happens, um, use a carrier oil, not water. Like, so use like coconut oil or even olive oil to dilute it down. The water would just spread it around. But you can totally like spray this right around your children. And um, a cross line member, she was talking about how she was cleaning the shower and had sprayed it down with thieves and then looked down and her two year old was licking the glass as it dripped down. She was just like, eh, whatever. And But if that would have been a conventional cleaner, she would have been calling poison control. So it's really nice not to have to worry. Um, same with pets too. You don't have to worry if they lick it. I didn't have to worry when my Boston Terrier went after, you know, before I had to worry about the Swiffer, if he went after the spray mop with the thieves, yeah, he made a face, but he was fine. So, okay. And uh, bouncing around. Lemon oil, make sure I covered all those. Oh, it's a great just refresher. I talked about um, you could put a little bit in your fridge on a cotton ball to keep your fridge smelling fresh, especially if you have like a lot of seafood or anything in there. Um, fish, anything like that, anything that leaves a smell. I like to keep um, lemon in my car too. Now don't leave the bottle in the car, cause especially if you live in Florida, it's hot here. It will evaporate even if the lid is on. Um, but I'll put some on a cotton ball every now and then, or I'll have it in my bag, and it's just a clean, fresh smell, and I'll stick it in the air vent, or just even, um, I'll put it under my seat. I should probably look and make sure it's not, like, eating away the plastic under there, because I'll just drip it in my car. I do that with purification, too. Um, I just love it, and it just keeps the, it keeps the funk away. It makes the car feel clean. You're breathing it in. It's cleaning the air. Um, we talked about a basic bathroom cleaner. Again, with the castle soap, if you don't have the thieves cleaner and lemon oil, like I said, you really can't go wrong. You basically get your oils out. You can mix them with some vinegar if you want. Again, vinegar doesn't kill the germs on its own. Um, it's a good cleaner, but it works way better if you add the essential oils to it because you're not going to like get rid of the flu virus and those kind of spores and stuff just with vinegar alone. You want to add, you know, your lemon, your rosemary, your pine, your thyme, that kind of stuff to it. Um, the herby ones I've noticed are the clean, the ones that are always really good for cleaning. Um, and I did look up some pros and cons of cleaning with vinegar. For one, the smell. The smell alone, I don't love the smell of vinegar. So again, I prefer my Thieves Cleaner. But again, if that's what you have to start with right now, if you don't have the Thieves Cleaner, you know, put some of your oils in your vinegar and go to town. It's still way safer for your family than using uh, all the other stuff under your sink. Now, um, before I knew really what I was doing with putting the, my chemicals into the environment, I took what was under my sink and for two years I used it in the toilets because I was like, well, dang, I don't want this stuff to, like once I learned about these cleaner and once I learned about what was actually in some of these other cleaners, I'm like, I don't want this like touching my skin, my dog's skin. I don't want to be breathing this in. You know, I don't want my husband breathing this in or my, you know, friends have little kids over here. I don't want them touching it because there's so many harmful things to it. So I was like, I'll just clean the insides of the toilet with it. So I was using like my pine saw, my Lysol and that kind of stuff in the toilet bowl. Um, and, and, and that is, you just got to figure out what, looking back, I was thinking like, if I throw it away, it's going to go into the environment anyway. I might as well get my money's worth out of it and clean the toilet with it. That was my decision. Um, and looking back, I'm like, dang, I just put all that cleaner over two years into the groundwater. But it, again, it would have been going to a landfill. I would have been throwing it out anyway. The main thing for me is I don't buy the stuff now. Um, and if places have those real scented, like, Bakey, you know, I, well, Bath and Body Works, I used to love that place, Bath and Body Works soaps. I actually usually always have my thieves spray with me. And so I'll spray my hands down real good, rub them, rinse them, spray them again, rub them, rinse them. And I will do that. Or I'll use my thieves hand purifier to kill the funk. Again, rub it, rub it, rinse it. Because I do believe in rinsing your germs off your hands, um, that you can't just use hand purifier for everything. But I will try to avoid even just, you know, using those toxic hand soaps because that's you know one less person putting that triclosan and fake fragrances down the drain going into our environment so I'm just very mindful you know where I am and what kind of soaps they have and like I said I always have my thieves stuff with me um I have a little more on okay so other benefits of vinegar vinegar is nice for um it can actually help with whitening some different things so vinegar and lemon in your laundry 
Like I said, I just pulled up different websites, didn't want to kill a bunch of trees, taking a bunch of notes. But yeah, vinegar and lemon in your laundry can help boost your laundry detergent. Um, but that's, that's basically it as far as the tips and tricks. Just really, I gave you the main oils there, like thyme, pine, cinnamon, peppermint, eucalyptus, lavender, orange, rosemary, lemon, tea tree. Those are all awesome, awesome oils to have. And you basically, you get many of those in the Living Starter Kit. Um, and then you get a lot of those in the cleaning kit um, with blends too. Like right now the Thieves Cleaning Kit just came back in stock and it comes with, well, an awesome big stainless bucket, a cloth to clean, a little recipe book for homemade cleaners that talks about some of the things we talked about tonight. Um, a spray bottle just like this, but it's amber colored. A full size bottle of the Thieves Cleaner concentrate um, the natural fiber cleaning cloth and then it comes with five five mil bottles of essential oil which are citrus fresh thieves purification lemon and pine and it comes in a cool little carrying case too which I actually use that carrying case for other things now um, or the thieves starter kit that's another great way to start too anyway the basic thing is start transitioning from the toxins to healthy natural stuff if you don't have a starter kit yet, let's talk. Or whoever shared this video with you, let's talk. Um, if you don't know how to get a hold of me, my member number is 2083366. Um, that pulls up my information uh, with Young Living. Uh, but it's the main thing is just start reading labels and being more aware of what you're using on your family, your pets, your children, and what's going into the environment because all that stuff has an effect on it. And like I said, the cool thing about Young Living is that I don't have to worry about reading labels. Like everything here is safe. I am not gonna find a lick of ingredient on here. It's, and it also says 100% therapeutic grade essential oils. I'm not gonna find anything on here that is harmful to the environment. So, and even like with the toothpaste, I don't have to worry about finding sodium lauryl sulfate in my toothpaste. That kind of creeped me out when I was reading about people, you know, using that twice a day in their mouth. Oh, totally forgot. More laundry. Wrinkle releaser. I just have some distilled water, a little bit of witch hazel, and I have some lavender and purification in here. And so this is what I use to spritz down my clothes before I need to hang them up if they have wrinkles or if I'm going to throw them in on the wrinkle cycle. So, okay, well, cool. I kept it within my hour. That was my plan. But, um... <clears throat> Lots of talking, needs water. Water with citrus fresh in it. But I hope you guys learned something tonight and please, you know, shoot me a message if you have any questions about things you wanna try or things that you have tried that worked. Um, the main thing is, is find a good quality oil and good quality products that, you know, are gonna help your family and help the environment and not harm your family and harm the environment. So that's all I have for this evening and I hope you guys are having a wonderful night and thank you for joining me.